the fuck are you doing, Paul? <laughs> okay. Um, while that's going on, should we all rotate with you? Twenty sixteen, we recorded this in Nashville. Joey brought some demos. We all brought ideas for songs, um, and Joey played this one for us. And it was Grandma's in a unconscious in a hospital bed. Something we 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 called it Grandma Wolf working title, twenty sixteen. And then over the next couple of years is when we we built up these word game lyrics that were then okay. edited down. So what about bass and drums? Like when when Joey brings a song to the four of you, what what does that mean? Yeah, this one is probably one of the more more straightforward tunes on the record. It's in four, which we don't play in a lot or often. This tune, I think we didn't fight it a lot. It was just like, this is the the guitar groove Joey has. Let's just build that. And it became like probably the clearest tune on the record that we can just all sit down and play it like like just let's just hit a straight rock tune i i think this is this is kind of like a mood song it, it it's kind of like you know looking for that mid-tempo kind of dark little bit mysterious thing you know just like a grandma wolf i mean what else could a grandma wolf be and um I, I'm I'm really happy with how the the bass and drums uh, have a kind of a, a little little bit of a counterpoint on on the chorus. So the verse is very straightforward ACDC, and then the the chorus almost drops out, and 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 the chorus becomes a little bit more of a floating thing instead of going for like bigger and like you know kick on the distortion. Um, it's a little bit of a fake out, and and um, I think the cool thing about Old Sam Peabody is, is the way that the, the the chorus almost opens up and becomes lighter. I also think this would be a great time for Paul to weigh, Paul Clemson to weigh in because this is kind of the first time you got to observe the full process a little bit more and, and so I, I know that you probably had a little bit different experience of our creative process which i assume you were annoyed by <laughs> funny enough not not at all i mean part of it was um you know uh as an engineer and this is a live taping so i likened it to mixing live sound where you know things happen and you try to catch up quick dial in fast and yeah the first song was a, a slog because we went from zero to 60 and then the second song it's like more of the berry um ways of working start coming out like the false starts the first time that happened i was like what the fuck three false starts is that the it's like the two fuck up rule yeah you fuck up twice no matter who you are stop playing start over yeah. is that what you're talking about yeah literally it'd be like Okay, one, two, three, four, don't, 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 don't. okay, one, two, three, <laughs> go, and it would maybe, and what messed me up was the second day, I was like, it would go longer, and then, <laughs> and then this, I'm like, wait, how does this work? You know, Matt, I, 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 I really love the keyboards on this one, I'd like to hear from you on that, um, yeah, so to start, I think we kind of went into it. Uh, I think Joey said it was kind of the Tom Petty kind of sound, that song. Um, I can hear and, that. And then uh, Paul, PK was like, man, Matt, I just want you to hear, I just want to hear you do some really sweet, just some sweet key licks and stuff all through the song. So as it developed, it was like going to turn into this kind of like sprawled out kind of doorsy kind of uh like it's supposed to have this long bridge in the middle where I do a bunch of like solo-y kind of parts and stuff. Um, but as uh, as we did, we started continuing to work on the song and we like cut it down and down and down mm -hmm. until it became just kind of like a more straightforward kind of pop kind of structured song. So then once we got the kind of the structure of the song, uh, I was going back and kind of redoing some of the, my parts and stuff. And I, uh, in addition to having like a kind of organy sound, I added kind of like the, the bell sound to go along with it. And I really discovered that I really like to have the, you know, the contrast of like the, like the, like the hold sound and like the sharp 
poignant sound to kind of uh, contrast with each other. I mean, that goes to like the, the keyboard sound on this record as a whole, you know, it's, it's really crafted by Matt. Like every tune has multiple layers of sounds that were like meticulously experimented and chosen after we recorded live. Mm -hmm. and that went back later and we recorded all of his keyboard tracks for every tune yeah. because he knew he wanted to craft. Plus on this record, there was these rules of any sound that happened on one song has to be found again on another song. So Matt took that also because he didn't want to just do random keyboard sounds. So every time, I think Matt, is, did it end up this way that every time you hear a keyboard tune on one track, a keyboard sound on one track, it's going to be somewhere else on the record too. Yeah. I used to try to do my, I did my best to try and keep things, you know, consistent through the album. Talk about um, the name, Sam Peabody. Oh, oh, old, old Sam Peabody, that's the name of the tune. So there's a bird theme that goes through a lot of these tunes. One one of the contributions I made to one of our, you know, lyric writing things was this bird song, Pneumonic? Is that the right word? Know, yeah, maybe. You know, like you say these things that help you recognize a bird song. So I made a mistake it went during our game, and I said that the white-throated sparrow says... Sweet liberty. Sweet liberty, liberty, and that's wrong. So the cor correct one of the correct phrases for the white throated sparrow is actually old Sam Peabody, but that's actually an old school one. There's there's a, a newer one, so it's kind of a it's an inside joke for birders. Um, <laughs> you know, we have a huge following in the birder. <laughs> So when they hear this tune and they're like, wait, that's not what a white throated sparrow is. <laughs> I the title. And I look at the title and they say, aha, these guys are genius. <laughs> <laughs> that's the white throated sparrow call right there. Old Sam Peabody. <laughs> 